Obstructive sleep apnea is a very common problem. It's estimated to affect up to 18 million people in the United States, and it really has two main implications. One is that it has a huge detriment on patients' quality of life. It affects snoring, nighttime awakenings, poor sleep quality, depression, and most importantly, daytime sleepiness, which is linked to increased car accidents. That's one of the major public health concerns. And then secondly, this obstructive sleep apnea process, when left untreated for years, has been linked to high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, and a number of other health concerns. For patients who are unable to tolerate CPAP or unable to get adequate benefit from it, we often look for alternative strategies. Many of these patients are just left completely untreated. And so at the University of Pittsburgh, we do have a number of different tools in the toolbox that we can pull from. And one of the most common ones is an oral appliance. This is a mouthpiece, a specially uh, fabricated dental device that holds the jaw forward and keeps the airway open. We also employ surgical techniques. These are reconstructive procedures to help open the airway as well as to sometimes change the jaw structure. We also focus on weight loss, lifestyle changes, improvements in sleep hygiene, body position, etc. But even with all those other options in the treatment armamentarium, we're often left with a large group of people that still are looking for another solution. So this new treatment is called upper airway stimulation therapy. And what that is, is it's an implantable device that goes underneath the skin and it's wired up or connected to the hypoglossal nerve, which is the nerve that drives the opening of the airway. So UPMC is one of the leading sites in the multi-center prospective trial that's been going on over the last several years. At the recent American Academy of Otolaryngology meeting, uh, we presented our three-year data showing long-term safety and effectiveness of this therapy over a three-year period of time, which is very important because sleep apnea is a chronic long-term condition that needs to be managed effectively, not in months, but across the lifespan. And we also presented for the first time our experience with this therapy at the University of Pittsburgh and showed effectiveness and safety results that not only matched the study results that have been previously published, but even exceeded them. Physicians should be aware that sleep apnea is a major public health concern and it's linked to a lot of the cardiovascular and health problems that they probably see on a regular basis in their own patients. And being aware of it and being aware that there are new treatment options besides CPAP can really help, I think, improve the patient's health and longevity. Thank you.